Uh, I'm Kyle Palmer. I'm a staff engineer here at the Shots Energy Research Center. Um, so um, if you have any questions as I'm going along with this presentation, feel free to send them in. Uh, and I'll do my best to answer as we go along. Um, and so I'm going to briefly go over who we are as a center, um, some of the projects we do, and then focus on our capabilities, and then uh, largely on our biomass testing capabilities. So the Schatz Energy Research Center is located at Humboldt State University in Arcata, California, in far northern California. Uh, we're a nonprofit uh, with the mission to promote and use, or to promote the use of clean and renewable energy. Uh, we meet this mission by performing research on renewable energy systems and designing, building, operating, and demonstrating clean renewable energy technologies. Um, our team is about nearly 50 people uh, with three directors, five faculty research associates, and 23 professional staff, 17 students, and three docents. So we started out primarily as a hydrogen fuel cell research lab uh, in the late 80s. And then, uh, you know, we built the first uh, street legal fuel cell vehicle in the US. Uh, and we hold um, some patents on fuel cell technology and have commercial license agreements for several fuel cell producers. Um, these days we don't do as much fuel cell work anymore, but um, this is how we built our core competency and data acquisition, measurement and controls. Currently we, do um, like we have 32 active projects and we, which are done mostly in three different categories. Um, the first being uh, microgrid work. And so that's largely like solar plus storage plus advanced controls. Um, there's a lot of work doing to optimize um, those types of systems. Um, we also uh, do work in biomass energy and then we do a lot of work with off-grid lighting and energy access in the developing world. Um, today, I'm gonna to be focusing on the biomass energy. So biomass from agricultural and forestry has a tremendous potential for providing renewable energy if harvested in an environmentally sustainable manner. Uh, we've done projects including um, biochar, torrefaction, gasification, densification, reformation, and integrated systems, which I find really interesting because a lot of the biomass conversion technologies um, operate on really thin margins. And so we've been finding some interesting, um, finding interesting work done with combining systems um, to make like a, like a, uh, like an energy campus because some, you know, like the waste heat from, for example, a biochar machine could be used to dry um, biomass for a gasification process, for example. And so as you combine technologies together, you get these interesting configurations that make them more likely to become economically successful. Um, and so we do research on uh, many different scales. So a lot of the like, chemical reformation work that we've done, for example, is uh, like bench scale, um, but we've also done um, you know, like large scale field operations. Um, and then also like even kind of landscape scale uh, modeling projects within biomass as well. Um, I'm gonna briefly go over some projects that we've worked on. Um, CERC was part of a multi-party team which received a $5.9 million grant from the US DOE under the Biomass Research and Development Initiative or BIRDI. Um, that's the Waste to Wisdom project. Um, 
Basically, we field tested um, several different biomass conversion technologies. Um, we've done uh, the California Biopower Impacts Project is a software tool um, to perform life cycle analysis of bioenergy. Uh, we've done a performance evaluation of gasifiers and um, we've worked with um, the Crook tribe to do a feasibility assessment for a biomass conversion facility at the Crook tribe in Northern California. Um, and we've also done a bunch of work with Bioshock production. So um, we work with a variety of different areas of biomass energy and, and uh, some, of the, some of our key skills are um, like R&D and deployment, um, systems integration, like I talked about before. Um, we do uh, lab analysis, of biomass properties, so um, chemical, physical, and mechanical, and I'll go over more about that later as well. Um, we do measurement and verification, um, thermogrammetric analysis, which is part of um, a lab analysis. We do a bunch with emissions and gas monitoring. Uh, we have a bunch of equipment to, to do that kind of thing. Um, we, do, we can assist with design and life cycle assessment and also technology assessment. So to go over some of our main facilities and uh, instruments, uh, we have a, a large belt dryer. Um, so we can test biomass at different moisture levels. Oftentimes when testing any kind of biomass conversion machine, you need to, um, you need to test it over a range of moisture contents. Like it's the crux of a lot of these biomass conversion technologies that perhaps will work perfectly under certain moisture percentages, but um, completely fail under others. So we have the ability to create feedstock at like a, typically what we would do is make like a matrix of um, feedstock properties. And one of the dimensions to that matrix would be moisture content, for example. And so we have the ability with our belt dryer, we have the ability to produce feedstock at specified moisture contents. Uh, we have uh, conveyors and hoppers to do um, all the material handling for field scale um, experiments. Um, we have screeners to do um, to make feedstock a particular size. Um, we have scales to measure. This is important for measuring, um, you know, uh, not only throughput rates but um, like efficiencies conversion efficiencies and, and that kind of thing. Um, we also have a 20 kilowatt programmable load. So for small scale like gasifiers, for example, that are generating power, we have the ability to create load profiles to test those machines. Under the material analysis, we have a TGA, like a thermogravimetric analyzer, uh, which is a pretty sophisticated instrument to measure the um, to measure, to do proximate analysis on biomass. Um, we have, like, because we're located at HSU, we have access to some of the university's instruments. Um, that includes a bomb calorimeter, um, so we could measure the energy content of um, both the incoming biomass, um, but also if, like, a, if a biomass conversion technology is creating a product like torrefaction, we can measure the energy content of, of that product. Um, we have the ability, we have a moisture balance, we have uh, an environmental chamber, uh, which is basically just a, um, a chamber that you could set the temperature and humidity. And so we could create um, 
or we could simulate environments that have um, different temperatures and humidities. For example, we do, um, we've done stuff with um, densification with briquetting. And so that's basically making, like it's similar to like a wood pellet, but like a bigger. And so when we're, one of the concerns about that technology is um, that if the briquettes under high moisture or under high humidity, if they fall apart. Um, and so we have a machine that can, um, where we could program uh, temperature and humidity within the chamber. So we have that machine. Uh, we have access to a scanning electron microscope. You can see in this image here, this is a, this is a picture that we took of biochar. So you can see um, the pore size. Um, so we also have a, um, just to continue on, um, so we have a scanning electron microscope um, and we also have some um, other instruments to measure the um, properties of biomass and biomass products. Um, as far as gas analysis, we have a gas, um, we have a CG. Um, and so, um, and also exhaust gas analyzer and a continuous gas analyzer. So we could do all sorts of um, product gas and uh, emissions testing for biomass conversion technologies. Uh, we have a lot of different data acquisition equipment um, for measuring pretty much you name it. Um, in terms of pressures, temperatures, uh, masses, flow rates, all, all that kind of thing. Um, and we have a lot of in-house expertise in um, national instruments for setting up custom instrumentation. Um, we have power meters and power quality analyzers, and um, we have an infrared camera as well. Um, we're also able to uh, um, fabricate, but we have a full electronics lab and a complete machine shop um, to be able to fabricate pieces. This is this is particularly important because sometimes when like setting up a to test a machine, sometimes you need to set up a significant amount of instrumentation, and that's a project in of itself. So we have the um, in-house capability of creating and fabricating whatever is necessary to to perform those experiments. Um, so how can we help? Um, like what can we do for you? Uh, we can do third party testing and verification. Uh, could do a lot of what we do to analyze biomass conversion technologies is mass and energy balance. There's, if you can take a machine and learn about what's coming in and what's going out based, based on mass and energy, there's a lot that you could understand of how the system works. Um, we can do performance analysis. Uh, we could also provide technical recommendations and there's potential for collaborations on future projects as well. Um, and so I just wanted to say thank you and um, provide the rest of the time for uh, any questions that you may have. So do, do we charge for our services? Um, the answer is yes, uh, we do charge for our services, but it's, it's um, through the um, through the BIC program. It's like, I don't, I'm not exactly sure how that works. Um, Courtney, maybe you know more about this, but um, it's my impression that like there's through this program that they would be per, they would be the ones paying us. So I'm not sure how much like what the like matching or what, what the requirements are for that. Um, somebody asked about biomass to renewables natural gas. Um, so there. Um, We haven't um, we haven't tested anything um, 
or like I haven't been part of a project that um, did a renewable or like a biomass to um, synthetic natural gas, except for that like outside the system. So I think the question is asking about like um, putting in natural gas or like producing like a, a synthetic natural gas to put into to be used into like natural gas appliances and that kind of thing. And we haven't done uh, we haven't done a project with that. Like we've only done projects where we create a synthetic gas and then use it on site immediately within the system boundary. Um, but that kind of that would be exactly the kind of thing that we would it would be up our alley to do testing like that. Um, I've got a question here about, um, looks like Joe Santos is developing a stationary test facility. Um, do we do field trips to the peninsula? Um, I'm not sure which peninsula that is, um, but we, you know, we do feel, we do all sorts of field trips, um, to, to different places, but it would just be project dependent. Um, if you're um, developing a test facility, um, that's the kind of thing where um, even if we can't visit, you could always, um, like I'm, I would always be happy to like answer questions or provide uh, feedback. Like we've, we've developed a lot of experience in, in certain areas and I'd be happy to share anything that we've learned. Like our main, um, you know, the, again, like I said, the um, mission of the lab is to promote the use of clean and renewable energy. And so any way that we can serve that mission, we'd be happy to do, um, just given within the time restrictions that we have. Um, so we've got a question about gas fire exhaust heat exchanger to thermal energy storage. Um, so we've done a lot with measuring the um, thermal efficiency of heat, like, getting like, the heat exchanger from the gasifier exhaust. Um, and so I'm not, sh I'm not sure exactly what the um, thermal, what the storage would be, but like we've, we typically, like I said about the integrated systems, um, it's, it's interesting to be able to use it on site. So if you have a gasifier um, co-locating a, um, co-locating a, like either a dryer or um, sometimes like we've been looking at doing like, like co-locating gas fire with like lumber kilns because you need a lot of um, heat to create lumber, like to dry out lumber. So a gas fire could provide the heat for that. Gas fire could provide the heat to, for greenhouses or any other system heat. Um, but I'm not sure about the, the storage. Heat's a tricky thing to store for very long. Um, I've got a question here about a coal and biomass combustion um, test. I've heard that there's like a pretty big one that happened in Oregon um, not too long ago. I don't have those details here, but um, that's that's becoming that's becoming popular as. Um, you know, the price of, you know, the price of biomass is coming down, the price of coal could be going up. So there, there could be some interesting, um, some interesting things happening there. Um, we haven't done any tests with, um, with coal and biomass, but um, again, that would be the kind of, that would be the kind of thing that would be um, kind of in our, um, in our real house. Um, I've got a question about metal hydride and, and flow batteries. Um, I only know a little bit about that. Um, so I don't think, I'm not exactly sure what the question is, but um, yeah, maybe if, if you could clarify that. Okay, well, some more questions are, are being typed out. I'm gonna go, um, okay, I see. 
the um, the thermal energy storage um, into the flow battery, which is I, I actually don't know um, anything about that, but that certainly sounds interesting. Um, if if that's like a if that's a um, technology that that somebody is developing um, that like, like we're potentially interested and well situated to be like a third party um, tester of that kind of thing. Okay, and so while more questions are being typed out, I'm gonna um, go to this this slide, which kind of I like to share this slide um, because it kind of underscores the importance of the biomass work that we do. Um, and so if you, if you take a moment um, trying to look between the two, um, between um, you know, the 1934 and 2013, this is in Washington state. Um, and at first it looks pretty similar, but when you look carefully, you can see that, um, that there's evidence here in the, in the past of like mixed regime or mixed severity regime fires all throughout the area where um, you know lightning lightning will strike a hilltop and it'll like burn and then fizzle out. Um, but decades of fire suppression has created this situation where all of these patches along the mountainsides are solid full of biomass. It's created this artificial situation of just uh, forest that's way more dense than was ever natural and so it kind of highlights the need for having tools to um, to um, help treat these forests to restore them to because like we want we want our forests to become in more of a natural state like in the top picture but right now like they're there's a lot of areas all over the Western United States that have like this excess biomass problem where if a fire happens, like if when a lightning strikes that hilltop, it'll just burn everything um, and burn everything so hot that uh, it can sterilize the soil and it creates these problems. So here's, Here's another situation or another picture that's come all over the West. You can see pictures like this, but in the bottom picture, um, you can see that, you know, all of these areas on the left side are all filled in. And then on the top, you can see between, they're like spaced out, you can see between the trees. And so we have this situation where there's just way more biomass than is natural in these systems because um, with all the fire suppression, um, with all the fire suppression that it's like creating a denser than usual or denser than natural situation. Okay, it looks like some more questions came in. Um, so a question was about if I could validate or measure low speed on water flow less than 10 miles an hour. Um, I believe so. We, def we, have, um, we have a lot of instrumentation here in the lab. Um, like we have a lot of, like most of our flow meters are um, like air fluid meters. We do have, um, we do have some uh, like liquid flow meters as well, but that's like a kind of instrument that could always be purchased. Um, so sure, we could measure um, fluid flow. Um, I've got a question here about uh, wildfire carbon emission. And so, um, yeah, uh, you know, I'm an electrical engineer, but some of my colleagues are really into this like life cycle analysis of like, what do you do, you know, like what's the big picture between like, you can either harvest the stuff and burn it, or if you leave it in, there's greenhouse gas emissions associated with all this, all the different permutations of what's possible. And they're running program, they're running uh, programs that 
um, try to analyze that. And it's a really, it's a really, really tricky problem because um, it really depends on on how you measure. There's so many factors and and that kind of thing. Um, I could provide links to some of that work. I don't know a lot of it off the top of my head, but um, there's there's kind of like a lot of work with just like the complete life cycle analysis of 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 that. All righty, Kyle. It looks like there are no more questions. Um, do you have any last thoughts? Um, yeah, I, I just wanted to um, welcome anybody to reach out to me. Um, it sounds like some people have some like, pretty specific questions to their own technologies. Um, and so, um, yeah, if you want to take that a little bit further, or if, you, if like what you saw here in this presentation is interesting, um, feel free to reach out to me and uh, we could discuss further. Perfect. Can you share that um, first slide with your email on there really fast? So oh, yeah, sure. And then we can. Oh, it looks like I didn't put it on. Um, it should be, uh, let's see, I could, I'm not sure if there'll be like notes associated with where this is, but we could put it in. I'll, I'll, I'll say it now with my email is kdp11 at humboldt.edu. Got it. And I will also be posting this webinar on bluetechvalley.org. So I will share your email um, with the registered people on here right now. Perfect. Thanks. Oh, Kyle, we have a request. Can you repeat the email one more time? Yeah, it was KDP, so Kilo Delta Papa 11 at Humboldt.edu. Perfect. Thank you so much, Kyle. Um, and if there aren't any more questions, I guess this is it. All right. Thanks, everybody. Thank you, Kyle.